I really don't know if I could love that song any more than I do. I love that song as much as I love you. And I love you. You know how I can say that? Even if you and I can't see each other, that I know I love you? Because I love people. I, lo I, love, I love human beings. I love the possibility that you represent in the world. Like you might be the person that makes all the difference in the world. Even if you can't imagine it right now, you might be that person. Gosh, that makes me happy. That's why I do this, you know, that's, that's why, because I do this because you might be the most important person to, for all the people in the world. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you are. Uh, isn't that exciting? Did you think about that? Have you thought about it before? When I was you, I used to think about that. I wonder how important I am. I wonder how important I am. I know there's people I'm important to. And sometimes I didn't feel important. Like I didn't matter. But usually that didn't last too long. Because I had good people in my life around me. Woo! You know what yesterday was? Yesterday was Mother's Day. I hope you all made a Mother's Day card. You know, even if you don't have a mom, it's easy to make a Mother's Day card. You don't have to, you don't have to write a Mother's Day card and give your Mother's Day card if your mom's not around. Like my mom passed away. That means she died a year and a half ago. And she loved me so much that her love is still with me right now. And that's how I know I love you, because she loves me. It's that simple. Once you find someone who loves you, you know pretty much that we love everybody. It's one of those things. Hopefully, you'll get a chance to see, to, ex to experience everything I'm talking about when you get to be me. And then you'll have the opportunity to to communicate it and share it with people who are you when you're me. And that makes the world this awesome, amazing place. Is it once when I was you, there was some person like me who told me this truth and then I remembered it and then I share it with you and then you grow up, become me and you share it with the person that comes after you. And that's how this whole thing works. It's really amazing, really. In fact, you know what? I want you to know. Yeah, look, look how nice I made my bed. I love making my bed. So here, here's the thing I want you to know, is that life is very much like a video game. Life is so much like a video game. Life is like a video game that we're born into. In fact, I would say that life is a giant game that we're born into and how we play it is how it is. So if we play it that it's unfair or if we play that it's not what we want it to be or we play that we aren't the ones that make the decisions, then that's how the game is. Or we can play it like I play it. Like, this is the best game in the entire world. And even when it's tough, it's more interesting than not playing the game. I love playing the game. The game of life. There's actually a board game called The Game of Life. All right, so listen. If you didn't write a Mother's Day card, here's the thing. I give you permission to write a Mother's Day card today. All you got to do is go into your room on your own and find a piece of paper, find a crayon, find a marker, and write out how you feel. And if, you, if, you're, if you're not great with words, write a picture, draw a picture. Because if your heart's in it, your mom will know. And even if your mom isn't around, you don't have to draw a Mother's Day card to your mom. Like, what if you don't have a mom? I didn't, I didn't have a mom. Oh yeah, I was telling you that. So my mom passed away a year and a half ago, but I wrote her a most beautiful card yesterday. And I gave it to her in my heart. I mean, that's how amazing the universe and reality is. There's no r limits. There's you make the rules. I make the rules. Why shouldn't I make a Mother's Day card for my mom? I love her. She loves me. She's just not here right now. Pop, pop, pow. 
what an amazing world, what an amazing universe. And that's the power of love. So if you didn't write a Mother's Day card, make something really special for your mom yesterday, I give you permission to do it today. It'll matter, trust me, okay? So that's important. Now, what's that got to do with astronautics? If you think for one second that astronauts don't have moms, you don't understand anything. Not only do astronauts have moms, astronauts are moms. There's so many astronauts who have kids. There's so many mom astronauts. One of my friends, Lori Garver, she works, for, she works with an organization called the Brooke Owens Fellowship. And it, and it gives opportunities and scholarships for people who are girls, people who are women, to go further in the career of space. And you know what they call Lori Garver, who was the deputy administrator of NASA? They call her Space Mom. We call her Space Mom. I don't call her Space Mom because she's my friend. But look, she wrote on my book. She's the one that did the, she did this thing right here. She wrote it. It says, for my book, The Astronaut Instruction Manual, she wrote, the Astronaut Instruction Manual is a fantastic and vibrant preparatory guide for today's youth, that's you, whether their futures are off in space or right here on Earth. Laurie Garver, Deputy Administrator, NASA. Got it? Pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool. So all of these awesome people, moms are super important. No moms, no space. No moms, no astronauts. There's gonna be, there's gonna be, ast there's gonna be space astronaut moms. There's gonna be some person gets to be the first person born in space. That's gonna happen. It's not me, it's not you, because we were born, born right, we were born, we were born right here on Earth, E-A-R-T-H. So, space moms, new concept. Listen, last Friday, we had the most amazing time with, with Space Andrew, Andrew Newman, and it was so fun. And you know what, it, like that, that was just the best. Well, at the end of it, what I, one of the things I said I was gonna do is, in, is today we're gonna, talk about, we're gonna talk about the three most important things that you can do to become an astronaut or become a person who lives, works, and plays in space, to become a space professional. We're gonna talk about the three most important things you can do. They're gonna be surprising. They're gonna be surprising, all right? Because I've thought about it a lot. That was an interesting thing that I said. What are the three most important things that you, 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 what are the three most important things that you can do to be an astronaut? Well, here's the funny thing. When I was thinking about it and working on it, I, I came up with five things. So I don't know how we're gonna make the three things into five things. So we're gonna call, we're gonna say the three, th three most important things that you can do to be an astronaut <laughs> are a list of five things. I don't know what else to say. Here, I'll write them down so you have them right off the bat, okay? You ready? You know how I love to write. I love to write. I love letters. I love, I love to write letters. I hope you do too. Here's my new markers. These are these, these are these crazy markers. They look great. But they, this one is the, the one that dripped yellow. I still got some of the yellow on me. Look. And it's still on my helmet. I love it. But we're going to go with what color? What color? We'll try this marker. This is a new one. Let's see what happens if it opens and spills all over the place. We're good. All right. Here we go. Okay. Three things that, three most important things. Three most important. I was going to say tips but I'm gonna say skills. So should I do the three tips to be an astronaut or the five skills? Or is it, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Okay, first of all, let's see what we got here. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you the first one right off the bat. It is this word right here. I love this word. Boy, this is a nice marker. Wow. Wow. Good marker, okay. Got it, can you see that? Let's uh, bring this up a little bit. This is, if you wanna be an astronaut, you get to learn how to do this. Because every single, oh wow, gosh. Gosh and golly, great gosh almighty. Let's see how this light works, I don't even know. 
can't figure the likes out yet. But like I said, we practice and we get better at everything we do as long as we love it. We don't quit, we don't give up, we just keep on going and figure it out. This word is help, H-E-L-P, help. And if you wanna be an astronaut, this is what, this is a tip to become an astronaut, help. Be one of the people that runs to help. I've got two sons, right? And so one is young and one is old. And the older one, Ravon Jones, oh boy. So how he got to be my son is his, his, his biological dad passed away, suddenly left. And uh, I knew him, I knew his dad, and he became my son. Bam, just like that, just like that. And one of the things that I love about, that's Ravon. One of the things I love about Ravon is that Ravon is famous for running to help. He will run to help someone else. He runs to help. He runs to help. He's been doing it since he was, I've, I've known him since he was eight. And now he's 20, I think he's 22. Ugh. Gosh, I hope not. I think he's, I think he's, I think he's 20. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Let me think. He's 20. Oh, boy. I hope he's not 21. He might be 21. You know, once they get to a certain age, you're just like, oh boy. He's an adult now, really is the way to put it. And even as a, an adult, as a grown-up, he runs to help. That's what he is famous for. And if you want to be an astronaut, you get to be, oh gosh, I want to tell you that of all the astronauts that I get to work with, woo, of all the astronauts that I get to work with, let me tell you, all of them run to help. I have watched astronauts who are speaking at a conference or who are working as space professionals, working, stop what they're doing to help somebody do something like change a tire or carry bags. I have watched astronauts stay after the job, after the work, whatever they were present on an occasion for, have stayed to help clean up. Astronauts, let that land for you. It's blowing my mind. I've watched astronauts do so many helpful things that aren't really about astronautics. I've watched astronauts stay and have talks with students and teachers after they've given a talk. I've watched, oh wow, I have watched astronauts help animals that needed help. My friend Nicole Stott is amazing at help. She's an astronaut, you can look her up, Nicole Stott. She helps animals all the time. It's a big deal for her. She loves animals. She doesn't have to do that. And she's a helper. There was a famous guy. You may have heard of him. His name is Mr. Rogers. Let's, let's, he was cool. I love this guy. Mr. Rogers. And Mr. Rogers had a very famous saying. Oh boy. You know how I feel about letters. Mr. Rogers had a very famous saying. It was about help. And Mr. Rogers, his famous saying about help was this. Look for the helpers. So if you're going to, like astronauts are helpers. Astronauts are helpers. Helpers are S. Helpers. Astronauts are helpers. Wow. You mean to be an astronaut, I get to be a helper? Yes, absolutely. Astronauts are helpers. It's just how it is. It's really kind of cool. Astronauts are helpers. So if you want to be an astronaut, this is three tips to be an astronaut. And it might be five, but it's three for sure. Be a helper. And Mr. Rogers says, look for the helpers. It's a very famous, very, 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 very famous saying. Look for the helpers. Ravon Jones, my oldest son, he runs to help others. Oh, wow. Like that's always impressed me about him. He inspires me. He always helps his mom. He is, he's, he, he's here in the United States now, and he is, he's from Jamaica. And he, and he works hard, hard work, and sends money home to his mom to help her. You know, when I was him, when I was 16, ooh, I had a job and I didn't want to help at all. I, I didn't want to help. I, I thought that was my money. Well, who paid for my house? Who paid for my food? Thankfully, I had a grown-up explain it to me. And not in a mean way. In a way like, look, who paid for you this whole time? Who took care of you? And I was like, wow. It was true. And then I got to help. And it was my pleasure. And then I got to help. My mom went at the end when she needed help from me. I got to be the helper. 
My mom helped me become the person that I am and I got to help her. Come on, what is better than that? Isn't that the whole point of life and work? Like that we can help other people? I think it is. So first one is help. Um, I better put them over here so we have a list. We'll, we'll make a, a list over here, right? H E L P one. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, the next one is gonna be health. Health, 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 health. Wow, being in good health, health. What does that mean, health? What is good health? Is good health just like, like right now where it's pandemic and quarantine, that's why we have this show right now. Quarantine is our space mission training. So you're training for space by being here right now. I'm getting to teach you in quarantine. This is our space mission training. So we're using, we're staying in good health and we're using this time wisely to learn how to be astronauts and space explorers. And we're not learning the stuff that everybody knows. We're learning the real stuff, the extra stuff that it makes all the difference. When people say, how do I become an astronaut? This is the stuff. Helping Astronauts are always helping. I have, I've met so many helpful astronauts, my Google. And health, health, being in good health. Is being in good health mean just staying healthy? No, because we don't always have, a, we don't always have the decision to make on that. We can't, we can't, sometimes we get sick. People get sick not because they decide to. So it's our job to do everything in our power to stay in good health. And one of the ways we can do that, this is so simple. This is really important, is to eat right, is to eat well. Vegetables and fruits make all the difference. I know that especially when, when you're you, that carbohydrates, which is stuff like pop tarts and chips and pretzels and some candy bars, yeah, candy bars, definitely candy bars. All that stuff are carbs, and they're like fuel, and they give us energy, but they're not necessarily the things that give us the building blocks. So we can run on them, but we can't build with them. Like in a Snickers bar, there's peanuts, so that's helpful. That's helpful, for sure. But in uh, like a Butterfinger, there's kind of peanut butter, but there's not really peanut butter, so it's, not, it's mostly sugar and flavor. So that's not really helpful. That's energy. Sometimes we need energy, but we have to have the building blocks and fruits and vegetables are the building blocks. Real fruits and vegetables, like fresh fruits and vegetables matter a lot. In fact, when we ask astronauts what food they want most of all when they're in space, inevitably they will say fresh fruits and vegetables. Now, don't you think that that says something? If the food that astronauts want in space most of all is fresh fruits and vegetables, don't you think that says a lot? Like we, like I, I have an I am like, hey, you want to go outside for a second? I'll take you outside. Check this out. Oh, I, I can't. Can I? I don't know. I can, but I can't. Oh, here's what I was going to show you. I've got an orange tree in the backyard. I don't know if the, I, I don't know what signal I'm connected to on this camera. So I better not walk it around too far because I will lose the show. But I have an orange tree with fresh oranges in the backyard because I'm in Los Angeles, California. So we have lots of citrus and lots of oranges here. My nose is itching right now. So these are delicious. And these are one of the things that help make us healthy. Oranges, as we all know, are filled with vitamin C. And so I eat these all the time. Yum. And when people, astronauts in space, oh, wow. Don't you know that they would love to have a fresh orange like this? I picked this off the tree yesterday. Smells great. Can you smell it through the camera? Ah, it smells really good. So fresh fruits and vegetables is one of the simplest ways to, to maintain good health. Oh yeah, let me, let me write health down. Health is a funny word. Health is a good word. It's just a, it's funny because in the word health is the word heal. And that, I think that is important. So H, E A L that's heel. So we got heel right there. And then the 
I love the TH combo. Th health. 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 So these are three things that, three tips to be a, a good astronaut. May, be a helper, maintain good health. Health. Eat fruits and vegetables. Oh, wow. Washing my hands. I wash my hands for 20 seconds. You know how, you know what song I sing when I'm washing my hands during pandemic? I sing Baby Shark. I go, I put the soap on, I put the water on, I turn the water off, and I go, baby shark, do 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 do, baby shark, do 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 do, baby shark, do 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 do, baby shark, mama shark, do 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 do, mama shark, do 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 do, mama shark, do 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 do, mama shark, and then this last one, daddy shark, do 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 do, daddy shark, do 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 do, daddy shark, do 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 do, daddy shark. And then I rinse. And that's my 20 second hand wash. I don't know what your favorite song is, but I love washing my hands of that song because it's hilarious. And that's one of the ways that I maintain good health is that I wash my hands every time I come inside or go outside. Okay? Like, uh, like me scratching my nose. I gotta go wash my hands after the show just because my nose is itchy for some reason. So, ugh, now my face is itchy. I probably need some lotion on it. Pop, pop out. So. Eating fruits and vegetables, washing our hands. Oh, that reminds me. Yeah, not sneezing on other people. Have you seen this sneeze right here when people are like, "Hachu!" and then they sneeze in their hand? That doesn't make any sense. This is the way to sneeze. Hachu! Or in your other, Hachu! You sneeze in your sleeve or in your elbow. Hachu! And that way you're not sneezing on anybody. You, have you seen anybody ever sneeze over a table? Oh my Google. It's like, it's like a, that's like, a, it's like a horror movie. The sneeze. We've traced the sneeze. It's coming from inside the house. I mean, the sneeze is way too close. So we sneeze achoo, achoo, into our sleeve. That's a powerful one, a good one, okay? Um, let's see, so there's uh, fruits and vegetables, washing our hands and uh, sneezing over here. Cha -cha -cha. And then uh, what's another way to, what's another way to practice good health? Plenty of water. Look, I got my water right here. Remember my water bottle that I, that I use, that I recycle? I've had this water bottle for two years made out of plastic. I just wash it and clean it. And then my friends, Blue Heaven, who owns a restaurant in Key West, and uh, they, have a, they have a spring in Tennessee, and they made this, they filled it up with their spring. And I like the bottle so much that I just recycle it. And then I drink water all day long. It's funny because we can be really busy and not drink water and then we get dehydrated and we get headaches and we get tired. But as soon as we drink water, it's like pouring water on a plant. We refresh. Water is a big part of health. And yes, astronauts are drinking water all the time. I don't know if you have Googled water in space yet, but you must Google water in space and to see how water behaves in space. It is awesome. Okay, so, so do that with water, fresh fruits and vegetables, um, uh, uh, making sure your hands are clean, sneezing correctly, not sneezing over other people. Practicing good health is definitely one of the things because when you're in a spaceship, like look, let's say this was a spaceship and there's a bunch of people in here. So there's somebody over here. If somebody's over here and they're just sneezing, achoo, achoo, achoo. Well, those germs are gonna go all over the place over here. And then sometimes, and like with, with coronavirus, germs, you get them from your breath, like exhale. So then those germs over here come over here, I inhale them, and then I get sick. So that's why achoo, achoo, we cover our mouth, our mouth on our seas, and that's practicing good health. And I guarantee that's one of the major things. Um, uh, those, and it leads, health leads to the next one. The health leads to the next one. The next one is hygiene. So we've got, we have got helping, healthy, and hygiene. Helping, health, and hygiene. Helping, health, and hygiene. Hygiene. Shall we talk about hygiene for a second? Goodness gracious. Hygiene is taking a bath. Hygiene is washing your hands. Hygiene is washing your face. Hygiene is washing your hair. Hygiene is making sure that when you use the bathroom that you're clean afterwards. Like everybody should wash their hands after the bathroom. Do you know people that don't wash their hands after they go to the bathroom? My son Ravon is pretty good at it. I, I mean, excuse me, my son Raphael, the other one, the young one, 
for a young guy, for a young guy, he's nine. He's pretty good at washing his hands. He actually was one of the people when he was five. He would always, he would always, it would, it would be something that he thought about. Practicing good hygiene is something that impresses impresses grownups big time. Yeah, these are important things. These are not small things. These are how grown-ups measure you even when you're not looking. We notice. We notice if somebody's nose is running all the time or if they don't wash their hands after they take out the garbage or something like that. We notice. You'll hear grown-ups correct students about this and then students think it's like no big deal. And then grown-ups in our heads, we take note. We're like, oh, personal hygiene is not a big deal for that student. Well, it's the same thing with true of grown-ups. Like if you practice and get good at hygiene right now, and hygiene is, is like, oh, hygiene is a big deal. I've seen high school students who just decide they don't need to take showers. It's a mess. It is a mess. They smell. They smell. They're a human being and they smell. Imagine being in a spaceship with somebody who didn't practice good hygiene and what it would smell like in a closed spaceship. It would be like being in a bathroom closed with a bunch of people, somebody who doesn't smell good. That does not sound like a good spaceship experience to me. That's why, and uh, uh, here's the funny thing about hygiene. Hygiene also, I gotta get a, a piece of tissue to, to uh, wipe my glasses. Hygiene also, this is an interesting thing. Wait, come on over here, Gimbal. Where are you going? Hi, how you doing? Hygiene also means, I'm like, I'm wiping my glasses, so that's hygiene. Hygiene also means um, um, mental health, like how we feel. Practicing good health and cra practicing good hygiene. Like pe some people, some grownups I know have done things that make their mind not healthy. And that is not good. And, it, and those things take away opportunities from us. Like uh, alcohol and cigarettes, honest to gosh. I know we all know, we know grownups who, who smoke and drink. But some grownups smoke and drink too much. Like, um, in the future, I don't think anybody will smoke. I don't think anybody. And, and, uh, and too much of anything. How about people that eat too much sugar? Ooh, I know, I know people that get sick if they eat sugar. And they still eat it. That's not good health. And that leads to a, a breakdown of health. And that leads, that leads to a breakdown of mental health. If your physical health isn't good, your, your mental health is going to be, is probably going to feel, you're going to get sad or you're going to get depressed. You can be angry. You can be frustrated. So sometimes we get sick and we just go through it. We didn't do anything to cause it and that's not our fault. And so we, we understand that. And then we practice everything to work to get better. These are important skills. These are not small skills. These are things we talk about and take for granted and they are not to be taken for granted. These are massively important skills. Health, helping, hygiene, wow. Holy moly, great gosh almighty. So here's a funny thing, right? I know I said three things, but there's five things. There's five things. Did I write down? Did I write down hygiene? Hygiene is a funny word, so let's, let's put that on the board. We're gonna raise health. Give me a second. Yeah, so my new markers, guess what? They dry really funny on the board. They're like skins in a way. They, it's, it peels off like an apple skin or a tomato skin because it's red. Real red. All right. So hygiene is a funny word. H Y G. See, it doesn't even sound like hygiene. It sounds like it would be H I J, but it's actually H Y. G I E N E. That's a funny word. So that's hygiene. <laughs> you think I'm gonna use that red marker again? Not right now. I'm gonna use the other red marker I have. That one seems to rub off a lot easier. Boca boca. Too many markers. Alright, watch. Here's hygiene. You ready? H. Yeah. Y. 
G. I. Hi, Jai. E. N. E. Hygiene. That's almost like genie. G I E N. That's a, this is a fun, like that's a funny word, right? So, three tips to be a, to three most essential skills to be an astronaut. Three tips right here. Well, I'm gonna write down hygiene right here. H Y G I E N E I E N E hygiene. That sounds like three. It's supposed to be over. That's it. Show's over. No more, right? Well, guess what? There's more. Yup, we've got these covered, but I want you to know there's two more. It's a list of three, but we've got five things on it. Can we work around that? We're gonna be flexible? It's our universe, right? Okay, get ready, here it goes. Oh, this is a great one. <laughs> I don't even have to write a word, I can write a, here, here's, here's, the, here's the other, here's the number four on our list of three. What is this? What is that? It's heart. So I was thinking of three things, but I kept on thinking about it. And so I realized, oh yeah. How many times do I get to do that? Look, couple bow fixed. Watch, H E A R T, heart. And here's a funny word about this word, heart. Heart is an amazing word. Like, let's get some, let's, let's, let's get you into this game, man. Like, this is really interesting. Heart is a fantastic word. Look what I get from heart. Watch what I get from heart. I mean, I love heart a lot. Watch. Heart, and then I can get art. There's an A-R-T. Got it? Out of, out of heart. I can get earth, E, A, R, T, H. Now with heart, I get art and earth. Come on. That's amazing. Like that's, that's pretty swell. So heal the heart, heal the art, heal the earth. Heal the art, heal the earth, heal the heart. Heal the earth, heal the art, heal the heart. So these are things worth, these are things worth keeping in, like heart. Keep your heart in good health. Heart, art, earth. All the same word, look, here's, here is art. If I take that H and I move it over here. Oh, look, hearth. Hearth is the home. So from heart, we get hearth. And heart, hearth is, is the, hearth is like, a, is like a fireplace. We call the hearth, hearth, home is where the hearth is. Home is where our heart is. This is an important word. So you can see how it was, there was no way that I could go on and make three things, help, health, and hygiene, to be an astronaut without naming heart. Because it has so much, so much to it, and I haven't even begun to talk about what it really has. Heart is our passion. Heart is our love. Heart has a lot of stuff in it. So you got passion, that's how we feel if we feel strongly about something. Like I have a real passion for space and I know that you have a passion for space. That's why you're here. Yo, my people, you got a passion for space and that's why you're here. You got a passion for it. Boom, 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 boom. That's heart. Yes. Or when, when, you want it, you, when you want something so bad that you just sink your teeth into it and you don't let go. <sighs> I'm getting this. Whatever the thing is that I want, I'm getting, I'm going for it and I'm getting it. That's because you got heart. You're not quitting. Not quitting means you got heart. If you got a goal, and even if you stumble and have a failure, like you don't get your goal, you don't quit. You practice and you get better. How many people, Olympians, look at all the Olympians, the people that go to the Olympics, master athletes. The people that go to the Olympics fail all the time and they don't quit because they've got heart. Quitters don't have heart. Not quitting something bad, quitting something that is important to you. When you quit, when we quit something that's important to us, it means we don't have heart. But when we don't give up, even when we fail, it means we got heart. And people see that. 
My friend, uh, what about our friend, Dr. Cyan Proctor? Remember, she got picked out of 5,000 people to be in the top 16 applicants for an astronaut with NASA. Top 16. And then they cut it down to the, the out of 5,000 people. And then NASA cuts it down to eight. And she didn't make that cut. Did she quit? Nope. Did she lose heart? No. And because of that, NASA called her up and invited her to be the very first analog astronaut in the first mission, rather, at a high seas Mars analog mission in Hawaii. And they paid for that whole thing. Just like when people go to space and become astronauts, they get paid to do it. How great is that? And that's because she has heart and people see it. People don't just grade us on how good we do on tests. They grade us on how we take the tests. They grade us on how we act and behave after we fail the tests. People fail. Failing is not a big deal. It's the character that we show after we fail. Like you ever see people that lose a, a sport and they're really mean or rude? Dang, darn, gosh, we got robbed. That's not character. Then you see the people that like, wow, you did great. You really deserve to win. I'm going to get you next time. That was a really good game. That's character. That person's got heart. I know a lot of students like that. I know both, I mean, like we've all been both sides probably. We learn. So learning, learning how to have heart, passion. Passion, commitment. Here's a great word, commitment. Heart, when you got heart, it means you have commitment. Lord, is there two T's in commitment? Let us check my Google. You know, I've read 10,000 books in my lifetime, and here I am looking up how to spell commitment. One T. I got lucky. Pop, pop, pow. One T. Commitment. Two M's. Three M's. One, two, three. Commitment. If you got heart, you commit. You're committed. I'm committing to it. I'm committing to it. You want to be, you want to be, I told my, I told my, I told, I told my son today, whatever you want, go for it. Commit to it. Dedicate yourself to it. We challenge ourselves. Nobody else can challenge us. We let other people challenge us. It's, it, we're, I, I'm always in a race with myself. When I'm in a foot race, I'm racing me. I'm not racing somebody else. I know I'm racing against them to win if I'm racing, if I'm running, but it's me that I'm challenging. I've got a commitment to be the best person I can be. And that's what makes a great astronaut. This is why heart is such an important thing. Having heart, whoa. Health is important, absolutely. Helping, Help. heart, heart health, heart health. Look, heart health, helping a person who helps has heart, um, good hygiene, keeping clean, keeps our heart in good shape. These are all connected. Heart is smart. Okay, so let's, let's put up heart over here on our list of three, plus this one, <laughs> heart. Our list of three is now four. Heart, earth, heart, hearth, big word heart. We love it. So three things you need to be an astronaut. Help, health, hygiene, and heart. <laughs> Our list of three is now four. And guess what? Our list of three is actually going to be five. And I really appreciate you being here today, listening to this. This is, this is like, you could be what you could be playing Minecraft. You could be, you could be playing Fortnite. You could be outside doing whatever, but instead you're learning how to be an astronaut. And some of these things are not just like get up and run things. These are some of these things are, are use our, use our mind things. Like, it's not going to just, an astronaut's going to be somebody healthy. Yeah, sure, strong, absolutely. Did you know, by the way, speaking of, speaking of strong and astronaut, did you know that people who have disabilities are actually sometimes better in space? Like, you and me, we're used to using our legs. So when we go into space, we're, we're, we don't know what to do. But when a person who's been raised in a wheelchair their entire lives, and we all have friends who are in wheelchairs or, on, or, or have um, 
um, braces on their legs or on their wrists or on their arms or on their shoulders. I know I have friends who are born without hands. They're amazing. They're amazing. They're scientists. Well, in space, these people who have disabilities, my friends who have disabilities are actually better than me in space, better than you and me. If we have, if we have all our limbs and arms, people with disabilities are just used to getting around. So somebody who had, who got, who got to, who gets to live in a wheelchair in space is a marvelous human being. They don't have gravity holding them back anymore. They may, may actually be better at space than you and me. Somebody with a, a disability, your friend or mine. Keep that in mind. So health doesn't mean that you're in great physical shape. It could mean that you're just in the physical shape you got here with. Being in good health means be in the best shape that you can be. Like if you if you only if you only if we only have one arm, well then it, it, good health doesn't mean we grow another arm. Good health means we make this arm strong. If our if our strongest thing is our mind, then we make that part strong. Got it? And we try to make all the parts as strong as they can be. Remember that. That's super important. Wow. Gosh, I should have said that earlier. Having a disability is not a disability in space. Keep that in mind. Last thing on our list of three, which is now four, which is about to be five. <laughs> oh my Google. This is a good one. You ready? Here it is. It is. Humor. This is a, this is a silly face. Some eyebrows. Uh oh. Watch. Oh. It's Q&A time. You always heard that, and I was, I, was, I was thinking about my face. Look, get some funny hair going on right here. Here is why. It, you, you're thinking that, you're thinking, oh, the fifth thing must be art because Mike is such an amazing artist. Look at this amazing artwork that he's created. Oh, I bet he could put some ears on this character. Wow, what a great artist you are, Mike. You're so good. Man, I didn't even know. What about a neck? Wow, what about Adam's apple, that thing right here? Adam's apple, maybe some shoulders, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool, there you go. Here is the fifth thing. It's not art, I bet you thought it was. The fifth thing on our list of three. Get ready. <laughs> Humor. <laughs> a good sense of humor. Just saying humor makes me laugh. Just saying humor makes me laugh. I love jokes. I love them. Oh my gosh. My buddy uh, Doug told me some jokes last night. Goodness gracious. Um, they were terrible. He told me, he, he, like, I, I love what people call dad jokes. And his jokes were, oh, wow. Mm. Mm. I'm trying to remember what they were. I'm glad I forgot. Here, what was the one that I was t I was telling him when I think I wrote it down? Let's find it. I got one. Uh, what's the joke that I like so much? I told you that joke before about um, why don't cannibals, which are people that eat people, creepy. Why don't cannibals eat clowns? Because they taste funny. I mean, I think that joke is hilarious. Okay, so then, why don't vampires eat clowns? Because they taste funny. A little scary, right? Scary. <laughs> and then, uh, what was the what what is the other one? Um, oh, this is a stupid joke. What does what does Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? What does Alexander the Great, conqueror of the Western world, big, big legendary historical figure, and Winnie the Pooh, and we all know who Winnie the Pooh is, Pooh Bear. What does, what does Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? 
да. Да. See, 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 these are actually terrible jokes, and I love terrible jokes. They're not bad jokes, they're just not. They're like, and you probably know a better joke. Feel free to send me your joke. If you send me your joke, I will, I will, uh, I will say your joke. And the fifth thing on our list of three is humor. And to be a good astronaut, you got to have a great sense of humor, okay? I want you to have a great sense of humor. I want you to, to laugh. We get to laugh at ourselves. I laugh at myself for not being the best comedian in the entire world. Though, in fact, we both know that I am. You, all of us, all of us watching right now know how great a comedian I am. You would probably buy tickets to see me in a comedy show, right? I mean, just the glasses. Mm. Po, po, po. So humor is really... <laughs> humor is really an important part. So we, let's, let's add this to the list. You know, why should humor have to be blue? Humor's got its own thing going on, right? So let's see. Okay, so. Buka, buka. <laughs> and then humor. Humor brightens anybody's day. So let's put it in bright yellow, okay? Three things you need to be an astronaut. Help. You gotta be a helper. You gotta have good health. You gotta practice good hygiene. Good heart. And humor. And how about this? Speaking of, speaking of, um, speaking of hu humor, I made a list of the three most important things you need to be an astronaut, and I made it a, a three most important things, and I made it a list of five. And you know why? Because I got a good sense of humor, and I hope you do too. So you know what time it is? It's Q and A time, questions and answers. And last time there was a couple people that asked questions, and I promised I was going to get to them this time. Well, guess what? I'm going to get to them. I'm getting to them right, right now, right now. Here we go. I've got them written down. Just got to locate them. Here we go. Coming right up. Ah! Sanjukta. Sanjukta Beloar. Sanjukta Beloar. Sanjukta Beloar has asked me, good question, how do I apply for astronaut jobs? Now, Sanjukta told me that she's in India. I don't know what grade she's in. I don't know what city she's in, but she's in India, which is a giant country, so she could be anywhere. If we had to go and look for Sanjukta, we'd never find her because there's a billion, more than a billion people in India. So we would go walk around. Oh, we might find her. You know, it might take a long, long time. If we had a long time, we could walk around and find anyone, I guess. Even with a billion people. Because not everybody named is Sanjukta Beloar. So Sanjukta asked, how do I apply for astronaut jobs? Great job. Great question. Fantastic question, Sanjukta. So Sanjukta, here's the deal. And you, if you want to apply to be an astronaut, as a student, I would start writing letters and emails to people who were in the space industry. I would start messaging all the different people and, and I would write thoughtful, considerate, and even letters with a little humor. I'd put a little bit of art in there and let them know that this is the job that you want in the future. And don't just tell them that you want to be an astronaut. Tell them what kind of astronaut you want to be. You want to be an astronaut plumber. You want to be an astronaut sport esports. You want to do an astronaut scientist. You want to be an astronaut nurse. You want to be an astronaut doctor. You want to be an astronaut teacher. Whatever the thing is that you want to do as an astronaut, let them know, okay? So write letters and emails and start collecting those. You're a student, ask me the question, and I'm a teacher giving you the answer, okay? Sanjukta, great question, great answer. Start with writing letters. Uh, this one comes from Cece, and she's in Colorado. And she asked... Um, mm -mm. Big question. CC and Colorado asks. What is the best as I can okay, so she is she looks like she's in college or she's out of college. As I continue to evolve in my career and considering the current events. I've realized how important it is to provide our current and next generation, that's you, with the most accurate information. What are some of the ways that you think that's the best way to do it by someone who has experienced it firsthand? What it takes to do training and education. Wow. Wow. 
wow, that's a serious question. So I think she's been through college already. So, so, so Cece, you've already beat, you've, you've already got to a really good place right now. So right now, as a person who's got through college, the thing that you're going to do that's going to be most important for you to be a space professional and to do the outreach that you're talking about, getting messages out, like, like she sounds like she wants to do what I'm doing for the next generation. Because she's, if she's, if she's just out of college, she's probably like 22, 23. So I'm 55. So 30 years in the future, what would she be doing? What's the world going to be like in 30 years? Ah, that's a great question. And what the world is going to be like in 30 years is the world that you imagine. Like, I'll get to talk about imagination another time. But imagination is our greatest power. We become authors of the future. Okay? Wrap your heads around that one. So in the future, we definitely want to have, we want to be, we want to have plenty of help and we want to help others. We want to have good health for sure, because there's a saying, um, you can't pay for, there's no amount of money worth good health. You can't pay for good health. Like it's this thing that people, people would trade anything for good health if they're not in good health. It doesn't matter how rich you are if you don't have good health. Hygiene. Well, no one's going to want to be around me if I'm, if, I sm if I'm smelly. So that's why I make sure that I'm, I'm properly, I shave, brush my teeth before, when I wake up so I don't have that dragon breath. And then I, I wonder if dragons really do have bad breath. Hmm. I mean, they, if they breathe fire, don't you think it would clean out the... Good question. So, uh, dragon breath. Um, at, before I go to bed, I make sure that I brush my teeth because I don't want to have cavities. So the bacteria will form on food that's in my teeth if I go to sleep with food in my mouth, in my teeth. So that's why I brush. Um, making sure my hair is always washed and, and combed so that, I, that I'm best presenting myself. Making sure my face is washed. Making sure that I have lotion on my face so it's not dry, so I'm not scratching it while I'm having a conversation with somebody. Hygiene is really important. My son, Raphael, I always have to remind him, Raphael, put lotion on your legs. You're ashy, son. You're ashy. <laughs> ashy means when your skin gets dry. So, yeah, these are, these are little things that make a big difference. So, uh, yeah, um, we get to imagine the future how we want it to be. We get to use imagination in, in making the world filled with things like help, health, hygiene, heart. You can imagine how you can best serve the world, that commitment, that passion. When you're you, right now, you're starting to imagine yourself in jobs and in roles and in careers. Remember, you're not just going to do one job. You're going to have plenty of jobs in the future. You get to do plenty of jobs. I don't know if any grown-up has told you that yet. We'll touch on that another time. And then lastly, humor. If you don't know how to have fun, who's going to want to have you around? Don't, you want, don't we want, all want a future that is fun? Don't we all want, all want a future that has art and goofiness and silliness? Yes. The answer is yes. Yes. I could do that all day long. Ba ba ba. Yes, we want to have fun and silliness and goofiness as well as as uh, as, as seriousness. We want to have seriousness and silliness. Like, what would be the point of going to space if we weren't have, have some play? That's why I always say that the future next generation of space explorers, you human heirs, work, live, and play in space. Not just work and live. Working and, live, working and living without playing? No. If I'm going to space, I'm bringing toys. I'm ha I'm, I, wanna, I wanna spin a fidget spinner in space. You know this, right? You know this about me, right? I wanna, I wanna spin a, a fidget spinner in space, pop up out. So those are the questions we have right now. I probably got more, but uh, I'm wrapping it up. Um, we're gonna have another interview on Wednesday. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be our first teenager. We'll see. Okay, thanks for being here. This is, uh, 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 let's see, parting words. I love to give you a couple words on the way out. Oh, what I should say is goodbye and then I'll do it like I did. All right, thanks for coming and uh, keep up the good work. Pow, pow, pow. Oh, you're still here? Yeah, here's a few parting words. 
Remember that I really care about you, will you? And remember that. When you're, when you're out there and you're living and you're doing your thing, remember if there's, a, if there's even just one person in the world, and hopefully there's a whole bunch, hopefully you have really terrific people in your life, great parents, great supportive people, whoever's in your life, just count me as one of them that cares about you and thinks you're awesome. You got it? Don't ever forget that. And there's a reason, because you're gonna go out there and you're gonna make the world as best, as good a place as I can imagine. You're gonna be one of the people that contributes to being this world being even better than it is. Believe it or not. There's a funny saying, fake it till you make it. So if you have any doubt that you are one of the most important people that has ever been born, I want you to fake it until you make it. Okay? You can just pretend until you get there. Just learn the skills. Because when you're gonna, when you get there, it's gonna make all the sense in the entire world. But you gotta get there. You gotta get there. So one day at a time, remember that there's somebody out here who's waiting to meet you. Because you're awesome. Waiting to see you again. Because you're awesome. Got it? We'll high five, go for a run, draw goofy stuff, make jokes, and, we, and work on getting space together. Learning math and science. Got it? All right. This is Mike Mongo signing off. And the words of my people. Bow, bow, bow.